Yeah, I'll go first. Okay, deal. Um, all right, so let's see. I like to go first. So at the beginning of the game, we rolled um, a dice to see who would go first. Uh, we chose to do the odds and evens route of that. I chose odd, and it was a five. So I am opting to go first. We just drew um, uh, six total cards, three cards from your atlas, and three cards from your spell book, unless an avatar specifies otherwise. Um, that is going to be your starting hand size. Um, you also have the option to mulligan um, as many cards as you want. If you choose the mulligan, you put those cards on the bottom, either the Atlas cards or the Spellbook cards, and then you draw that many cards to your hand. Let's see, what do we got? And then you put the ones that you discard at the bottom of the deck. Mm-hmm. And you don't shuffle. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to keep the Atlas cards. But I am definitely going to mulligan my spell cards. It's a mulligan three. Spell books. And then I will draw three. I'm doing two and two. Two and two. Alright. Ready? Ready to start this party? Okay, so beginning of the game, um, your avatar is going to start on the square, um, and then you have to play a site. So I am going to tap my avatar, and I am going to play a Spring River on the, underneath the avatar. And Spring River has this text box right here at the bottom. And it says, Genesis, look at your next spell. You may put it on the bottom of your spell book. So I'm going to look at my next spell. And if you're using TTS, the hotkeys for this is Alt and Shift if you're using Windows. And I am going to opt to keep that card on top. And now I have one mana. And I am going to Esther. Do you also want to talk about the threshold? Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so threshold. So if you see the card, I've got Spring River uh, up here. So this is a water threshold, and it, it's water because you can see on the bottom right-hand corner of the Atlas card, there's a blue triangle, and that is my elemental threshold. So right now I have one mana because of the site itself, and because of that blue triangle, it means I have one elemental threshold. So and the threshold is just um go ahead go ahead oh i'm sorry uh yeah go ahead because i was gonna say at the, since this is my first turn i don't get to draw a uh a sight or a um a spell so. yep first turn of the match first first turn of the match does not draw at all right okay so i'll go ahead and draw a spell And what I'm looking to do is I'm mulligan some sites because I'm trying to look for the simple village that gives me a token right, right off the bat. Yeah, so one so one. <clears throat> Yeah, so simple village, he just played simple village and his Genesis read, you may pay one to summon a foot soldier token here. Um so he's only got one mana. So in this instance, he could either opt to use this mana to pay for this token. Can you also pay a, a play a one? No, you can't. Mm -mm. So his option is either play the foot soldier or if he's got a minion with one cost, he could put that down. So it's vice versa. Yeah, they changed that. They did. Mm -hmm. Yep. It costs it now to play. Free. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I'm paying with the same site I'm um, putting down. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there. <laughs> no, that's great. No, I was playing it as if they didn't change it. And then also, because I'm hovering over his, uh, your simple village. So um, his elemental threshold. So, of course, because he played a sight card, he's got one man on the board. Uh, but he's playing Earth. And you could see that because if you look at simple village, he's got an elementalist. Um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the triangle there. Uh, upside down triangle. Threshold. Earth. Yeah, threshold. And that is uh, counts for Earth threshold. Okay, well, I'm passing the turn to you. All right, so I'm going to untap. Um, and then I could either draw from my spell book or I could draw from my atlas. At this time, I'm going to draw from my spell book. And we already know what it is because of what we played last turn, the Spring River. And then we are going to tap our avatar to play a summer river so now we have two mana and two water threshold and we are going to use the triggered ability look at your next spell you may put it on the bottom of your spell book and we're going to keep that on top and we've got two and we're with the two mana we are going to play polar bears and I'm going to put polar bears right here. And if you look at polar bears, the two on the top left hand side has this uh, number two. And then on the right of the number two, you have a water symbol, which is your water threshold. So you need at least one water threshold and two mana to play polar bears. So we got one site, two sites for the mana cost. And then these are both waters. So we met the requirement to play polar bears. And Polar Bears is a 2-2, two, two. Uh, so it's power of 2 and defense of 2. And its um, text ability is, can move as if the top and bottom edges of the realm were connected. So as you can see in this, we have got a water site right here. The void, this is called the void if there's no site on the board. Um, so there's no site there, so that is the void. And then um, my opponent as uh, his site so uh, a normal minion could not go and move this way unless uh, all the, the, these sites were connected however polar bears because of its text it can move the top and bottom edges of the realm so he could actually move here on my next turn if I wanted to and whack him for two or attempt to whack him for two mm -hmm. uh, that's me man pass sorry <laughs> no that's awesome that's great okay um, I'll untap everything and I will draw from the spell book again. And I will tap the avatar to play a site. I'll put the vantage hills. Gives me plus one range. Okay. And I'll go ahead and move a foot soldier over there. Okay. And I'll spend one mana to play the wild boars. The boars. And I'll pass it to you. All right. Oh, I am going to untap. I'm going to draw from the spell book again and I will hmm uh, I'm gonna tap my avatar to play undertow and undertow says Genesis staying within this body of water move target unit one step now when it says target unit your unit can either be your avatar or any minion and in this case, my body of water, this is interconnected because these are all water sites. Um, so in this case, I'm going to use the triggered Genesis ability and I'm going to move my bears right here. And now I've got three mana. And I'm going to use three mana to play 
Uh, I'm going to use three mana and one water threshold to play uh, Coral Reef Kelpie. And it has a, a text where it says submerge. So I could either submerge my Kelpie underneath my water site. Or I could keep them atop of the site uh, of the strata. And I'm going to actually use the Kelpie's ability and I'm going to submerge the Kelpie underneath and I will pass. Sweet. Okay. Do you want to take a, a few seconds here and explain the strata? What oh, yeah. Means? Let's do it. You, I'll let you go ahead. Go ahead, man. <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> yeah, you got that nice smooth voice, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Well, in the game, there's basically three three stratas and it's um to explain really uh where minions and uh, units overall can be placed and the first strata is the uh, void and um there's different mechanics and flavors that go tied to that uh the second strata is really on site and that also includes like airborne airborne minions and etc and then the third strata is submerged so anything underneath uh, or burrowed, right? Underneath the water sites, merged underneath earth, um, burrowed. Yeah, and this is a fantastic uh, game that we're playing to uh, show all of this, uh, besides uh, the airborne, I believe, uh, because we've got submerged uh, minions and we also have um, earth minions. I don't know if you've got any burrowed minions in that pre con deck or not, but. Um, maybe, we'll see. I think <laughs> I, I have the trolls. Oh, so yeah, trolls. And trolls are, yeah, they can burrow. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I think water versus earth is a little OP because you could submerge and instantly kill everything. True. <laughs> um, because you flood the sites where I can't do that on your end. Mm hmm. Okay. So is it my turn? It is uh, okay. your turn. Yep. I will start by untapping. And then I will draw spell. And let's see. I'll tap the avatar and play Holy Ground. Okay. Nearby avatars heal for three life. Ooh, that's but changed. It, they did change it. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm sorry, everybody. Since we're saying that's changed, because we uh, we were in version 0 0.6 on the TTS revision, uh, and we just had an update yesterday, and uh, they updated the precons, and now we are in version 0 0.7. I'm going to tap and move my foot soldier over here. Okay. And go ahead and pass it to you. All right, so we are going to untap. We are going to draw from the Atlas. And the reason why I'm doing that is you can see in my hand, I've only got three. Uh, I got three spell books, but I don't have any um, sights. And um, I kind of kind of want that, um, that mana. So I'm going to draw from the Atlas. Hmm. Uh, they changed this one too. Okay, so we're going to use three mana. I'm sorry, we're not using three mana. We're going to tap our avatar to play a site. And we're going to... Whoa! Oh no! <laughs> we're going to play um, Tadpoles. Hmm. And Tadpoles, and if you see at the bottom of Tadpole, it says three water threshold. So I need I need three water mana sites, three water threshold sites, which I have. Um, let's just say, for instance, if I didn't have this one, um, if I play this, this still counts for tadpoles would still count for itself to meet that that three mana threshold. But technically, I have four mana th uh, threshold right now, or four water threshold. Uh, so tadpole genesis summon three submerged frog tokens here uh it used to be 
it would say uh, summon three frog tokens here but it wouldn't tell us if it had to be submerged or if we could keep it atop but this is specifying that uh, the genesis effect that the frog tokens have to be submerged so in the game you've got tokens and I'm gonna submerge these three frog tokens and I'm gonna put these underneath my site and then I'm going to hmm. I'm gonna use two mana go down the two and I'm gonna play Tide Nyads here it says submerge uh, this site is flooded it is a water site so if I had a earth site um, and I played it on, a, on an earth site or a non water site I would flood that site but in this case I have a water site so it doesn't waters water says so already flooded and I am gonna opt not to submerge my tide diodes and I'm gonna pass okay untapping I'll draw from the atlas and I'll go ahead and tap the avatar to play another vantage hills nice and with that I will spend all that mana to play the Pudge Butcher. But Pudge, Pudge is making Which a presence. Has been nerfed. Mhm. Mm it used to be Strike. Now it's more like normal combat. Normal combat. Yep. Yeah, they did nerf it. Mhm. Mm I think it's still strong. So you... Yeah, that strike in combat is definitely different. Mm hmm. So, in the text box there, it says immobile. Um, so, meaning uh, once Pudge goes out, and, and um, my opponent chose to put Pudge on this site right here, um, he's pretty much there until he dies. <laughs> yep. So, um, he cannot move. Uh, tap, shoot a projectile. In this case, if uh, using my imagination on the card, his projectile is going to be this awesome looking hook that he has. And if it hits a unit, it drags it to this location and Pudge may find it. Pretty neat. Um, really quick too, um, every minion that you put on the field has summoning sickness. So in this case, since... Um, uh, you, he put his Pudge Butcher out there. He's not able to utilize um, the tap ability because it has summoning sickness. So he has to wait to build his next turn to activate his tap ability. Right. And I'll go ahead and move the boar over here. And I will pass the turn to, to you. All right. Untap. We are going to draw. Once again, we're going to draw from the Atlas. Hmm. Shh. Um. We're going to. Tap our avatar to play Floodplain. And Floodplain says, once on your turn, you may flood an adjacent site this turn. And so I'm going to flood this site. Um, so what that means is it's uh, his site is still an Earth site. Uh, however, um, it's also kind of like a water site too. So if, if I wanted to, or for whatever reason, if I was able to get my tide naiads out here, um, because this site is flooded, I can submerge these tide naiads, uh, underneath the vantage hills. Um, but 
flood does not mean like uh like that these guys are um uh you know drowned i can't drown them um unless right, the only way to drown these are submerging them not flooding right correct flooding only makes it part of the body of water mm -hmm. it does not give you threshold right or mana i still own the site mm -hmm. um but things that are water bound can now enter that site so if you had like the pirate ship or something then you can definitely go there um the tide uh card that you have there automatically makes the site that they're on flooded oh that's right yeah so mm -hmm. regardless of where of this site being played you would still wherever you move that would actually also be flooded right thank you yep <laughs> water. yep but yeah, which is a perfect example too. Like I said, the, the body of water. So uh, like a undertow, staying within this body of water move target unit one step. Um, so if I did play this, uh, uh, because this site is flooded, that would be, it's still my body of water or a body of water. Okay, cool. Uh, so I played that. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four. I've got five mana. And I think all I'm going to do is, oh, Pudge is so strong. Um, I'm kind of scared of Pudge because he's a, he's kind of a big body. And it, once it goes to his next turn, uh, he's a five power five defense. He's, he's a big beefy boy. Uh, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is, uh, which is perfect uh, for teaching of the game, uh, tie Nyads. It has submerged. Um, so on my turn, all I'm going to do with my Tide Nyads is I'm going to protect them. So I'm going to opt to submerge uh, my Tide Nyads this turn. So since I just submerged them, um, I am not able to move to a different site or do anything else with Tide Nyads. That was its uh, action for this turn. And I've got five mana. I think I'm going to play, or I'm going to use three and go down to two and I'm going to play a Kelpie and I'm going to submerge my Kelpie and pass. Okay. I'm going to untap. I'm going to draw from the Atlas. And I will play the site. it over here i will not summon the foot soldier okay instead instead of that i will play doo -doo -doo -doo. bannerman card here so it just gives me a uh, plus one power nearby allies that includes everybody mm -hmm. so all nearby units do you want to talk about did you already talk about nearby uh no we have not talked about nearby so in this case uh house armed bannerman um other nearby allies have plus one power so nearby uh since he played it here nearby is going to consist of the site that he's on this site right here, if if there well right now it's a void, uh, this void right here, that site, that site, and that site. So pretty much all surrounding sites around the uh, House Arm Bannerman is going to be uh, nearby. All right, and if it's not nearby, what's the other option? Just adjacent. Adjacent, correct. And can you can you just explain very quickly? What yeah, that means. <clears throat> adjacent. So we'll just use House Arm Bannerman. It's the same um, card. Uh, so adjacent would be a site that's here, here, or here, or um, 
<laughs> here if there is a if there is a square right there. So we'll we'll use but pudge really quick. So adjacent for pudge would be um, here, 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 and here. Where the nearby would include the diagonals. That is correct. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. That's a uh, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start the damage here. So I'm going to tap oh Butcher and I'm going to drag the avatar because it is the first unit that it strikes. Right. So yep. Bring so it all the way. Once again, the avatar, even though it says avatar, it is a unit in the game. So uh, Pudge tapped and shot his projectile. In this case, he's using that big old hook, dragged a dragged avatar of water. And now you're punching me for how much? For six, because it's five uh, default and plus one from the bannerman. Awesome. And I'm going to take... Uh, now, <clears throat> really quick, I'm going to take six. Uh, go down to 14. Now, if I did have, let's just say that these foot soldiers were mine and they were not my, uh, were not Mike's, um, I could, um, theoretically come in here and block, um, block that. But since this is not my unit, uh, I've got no blockers and I can't, I can't unsurface uh, my my kelpie because I could only block with the kelpie if they're submerged if it was on my site okay okay um so I hit you for six and let's see do I want to go all in no, you could go ham man you could go all in <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to lose it. I don't want to be greedy, you know? You, you could I go. want you to just Ooh. merge everybody on that site. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep calm. And I'm just going to do that. That is my turn. Okay. Pretty good turn. So I'm going to untap. Let's see. Reread what Avatar of Water does. So tap player draw site. Uh, tap flood a site adjacent to your body of water until you do so again. You may teleport there. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to... Hmm. Tap five. I think I'm going to draw from the Atlas. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh, Mike, can I say something about projectiles really quick? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Because um, the Butcher actually has in the text, it's uh, shoot a projectile. And mm -hmm. what that really means is that, uh, first of all, projectiles move in a cardinal direction right uh -huh. towards the destination. Yes. And then um, let's say there were there was more than one unit in the site, right? Because it strikes the first unit. Mm -hmm. Then the caster, the person over the card, in this case, it would be me. I would decide which unit I would drag. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the projectile hits that unit and just immediately uh, does the damage. Okay. Uh, as it hits. And so there is really no ability to defend that attack because of the keyword projectile ah okay perfect see learning every day <laughs> thanks for that clarification mike appreciate that and that's yep. good too because we didn't even go over cardinal direction <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah uh so cardinal direction if 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 no one knows um so cardinal direction will either be northeast southwest Right, it would be the same as adjacent, but more than one step. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I think I'm still gonna oh man, Pudge got me really just yikes. Um We nerfed it and it's still strong. Yeah. 
uh, if you read the the change log, they were worried exactly for stuff like this dragging in turn four the avatar. Mm-hmm. Yep, so I'm going to tap my avatar and I am going to uh play a site. I'm gonna play Summer River here. I'm gonna trigger the Genesis ability. Look at the top card. Hmm. I'm gonna actually put this card on the bottom. And on TTS, if you do that, if you hold down um, left left click on your mouse and then you tap the right click, it'll slide it right underneath your uh, your deck. Let's see, so that gives me six. And then I'm going to... I'm gonna... Hmm. Yeah, this is really interesting. I'm gonna... I, I guess I'm gonna come in and unsubmerge my... Uh, Tide Nyads and my Kelpie. And I am going to put this Kelpie and I'm going to swim underneath uh, my opponent's site because Vantage Hills is flooded. Mm. And then I am going to swim this frog underneath this site. I'm going to swim this frog underneath this site. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna put this frog underneath this, this site as well. And I think I'm gonna pass. Okay. So I am untapping. I will draw from my spell book. thinking okay so let's see I'll hit you again for six here. Mm hmm. So Cardinal includes the square I'm in. And I'm hitting your avatar. Mm hmm. Oh, you're using the, uh, the projectile or yeah. just a regular? No, the projectile. Okay. Um, so in this case, like you said, I can't come in to save the day. So right. I'm going to take six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And... Ah, Pudge is so good. Ah, so mm. good. <laughs> it is very, very good. So... People playing or jumping in in this game, when you see Pudge Butcher here on turn four and your avatar is sitting right here with no <laughs> blockers or anything, you might want to move him to the side. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned. Yep. <laughs> um, so, hmm. I'll go for three on the avatar. Oop, what happened? Hmm. Three, two, three. Um, I'm gonna block with my Kelpie. 
and we're gonna exchange uh, damage because they go simultaneously. Uh, so since the Kelpie was a, a, a power and toughness of three, and the Boar's uh, is a power and toughness of two, but it gets plus one from the Bannermen, so that's why they cancel out. Yep, and then I'll go ahead and attack with the Foot Soldier on the Avatar for two. Hmm, do I want to waste my Nyads for that? Oh, I should have just took three. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll block. Um, so since I haven't played a site and I haven't moved or anything, I'm going to go in and hit you for Five. Ooh, buddy. With, with my own avatar. Let's see here. Yep. So, so you got one from Avatar of Earth itself. Then you got because of uh, was it nearby, right? Mm -hmm. Nearby Earth sites. So two, three, four, and then the plus one. Or er, uh, the Bannerman. So five. Yep. Take five. And that's it. That's my turn. <laughs> All right. Guess you're not just going to hit me with Bannerman as well? <laughs> no. I'll leave that one there. <laughs> All right. We will uh, untap. Let's see. Tap flood site adjacent to your body of water until you do so again. He may teleport there. Uh, we are just sitting ducks because even if we flooded a site, uh, we go there, Pudge is going to get us. We go here, Pudge is going to get us. Uh, so, um, just going to, we're going to, well, we're going to tap to draw. Or no, we're not. We're going to, we're going to draw from the spell book first. Okay. Hmm. And we're going to tap, we're going to move here. We're going to use two mana going to uh, four and we're going to play Hide Nyads here. And we are going to tap, move our polar bears here. And we're going to pass. With the butcher, I still choose the target. Mm hmm. Okay. So I am untapping everything and I'm selecting from my spell book. Yep. And I'll go ahead and do that and bring over the avatar. Okay. And hit you for six. So in in uh in sorcery, um since he's hit me for six, I'm gonna go down to zero. But the game doesn't end there. Uh, now we are at the stage of the game where it's called Death's Door. Um, so I cannot heal if there's any cards in the in the game, which uh, there is. There's a few cards in the game that can heal. Uh, heal your avatar. But if once you're at Death's Door, your avatar cannot heal. Um, so ultimately now the opponent is going to have to figure out a way, which is pretty easy in this game, um, to deal the final death blow. Uh, on the next turn. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Um, since I can't really um, 
kill you in this turn because you are at death's door, then I will just... I'll spend three mana. Mm hmm And... Play some archers here. We got here. Longbowmen. Ranged. Okay, so this is another card that was changed. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about ranged? Sure. So range, um, so in the game, there's really uh, the typical way of doing combat, which is, you know, you engage in an attack and you have to be on the same site as the minion or unit that you are attacking. Mm -hmm. But range allows you to attack from afar. And it's basically using the same mechanic as a projectile. So again, I would have to tap and uh, choose a site adjacent mm -hmm. one square. So that's what's range is. It's just one. And in this case, I would be able to hit any of these two sites right now for the total damage of three. Gotcha. Now, can you can you shoot? Because um, you know sites are ultimately linked to your to your avatar. Mm -hmm. And it if if let's just say I was at ten, can you use your longbowman to do a range attack on a site without a unit on it? No. Right. Okay. Also, range can also do um, uh, can also shoot um flyers airborne. That's right. And void walkers. And void walkers. That's right. <laughs> So okay, I don't. That's my I, turn. Yeah, I don't know if uh, if the cards in uh, the pre decks, I think they are, uh, but a good um, um, combo card to utilize with ranged would be lethal daggers because uh, lethal dagger has uh, the bear has lethal. Uh, so if you do a ranged attack, and even though the longbowman is coming in with a ranged attack for three, and let's just say uh, he was shooting Pudge Butcher, who's a five. If he didn't have lethal dagger, um, you know, he would take three damage and still have two toughness left. But if he had a uh, poison dagger uh, or a lethal dagger equipped to the longbowman uh, because it's lethal, uh, it would ultimately kill Pudge Butcher. But, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to untap. Untap. I'm going to prep for death. <laughs> um so we're gonna try to go out for some kind of a bang and uh we're gonna oh actually we're gonna draw from the spellbook first okay so i'm gonna play this card just for some card draw uh so i'm at six total mana right now i'm gonna use two mana that go down to four and i'm gonna play Riptide. Now, Riptide is a magic, so it ultimately has to be um, cast from your spellcaster. So, in this case, it's from my avatar, which is uh, all your avatars are spellcasters. Um, and auras, auras, unless it's um, um, uh, expound upon on the text of the card, auras maintains four sites. Uh, some cards they will say um, put on a, a adjacent site, so it'd be like in this case it'd be like these two. But um, in this case, it's uh, I'm gonna put that right there. It occupies four sites. It says uh, target water site pulls in above ground units, the unit it borders, and I draw a card. So I'm gonna draw a card. Hmm. Okay. So you're casting this now? Yes. Casting that. Mm hmm What what uh unit are you selecting? Uh target water site pulls in above ground unit it borders. Um now is this saying like it when it says pull in, is it talking like like pulling it under? Pull in. 
I'm thinking it's uh dragon to the site. Dragon to the site. Okay, so oh uh, we can't we can't do Pudge because he's immobile. And you're on the same site. And I'm on the same site. Um ultimately I'm just uh not pulling in anybody. Um Well this is a magic spell, it's not an aura. So oh it is. Oh you're right, I stand corrected. Admit. My bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so let me I'm gonna pull in let's see here, target water site. Pools in above ground unit it borders. Um, so I think that you can do the, the longbowman or the bannerman. Yeah, let's uh let's just go with the longbowman. All right, and then um, then we're gonna use. See here. We're gonna use three mana and go down the one to play a ice lance. Oh boy. <laughs> it says shoot a piercing projectile, deal three, then two, then one damage to up to one unit at each of the first three locations along its path. Well, spellcasters here, so the first thing in its path are gonna be these longbowmen uh, that I'm gonna trigger okay and then it's gonna go along the path and it'll deal two to the bannerman oh you know what this doesn't die though because it's plus one that's right bannerman. yeah yep so ultimately um which is a good learning experience so uh yep those don't die uh but that's how the uh that's how a uh lice or uh, uh ice ant lance would be played um, utilizing the avatar as a spellcaster. And that's me, man. Pass. Actually, before I pass, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do some damage here. Polar bears are coming in. Oh, they're coming. <laughs> Whacking for two. <laughs> for two? For two. I'm gonna defend it with my, uh, longbowman. Yep, kill my bears. And I'll pass. All right. Do you want to talk a little bit about how I was able to block that? Yeah, go ahead. I'll let you go. Okay. So you're using the polar bear's ability, the text, right? To mm -hmm. traverse the realm and basically teleport here, Mario style. Right. <laughs> uh, and then you're hitting the site because there are no units on this site. So, and when the avatar is above zero, ground units can attack the site. I should say non-projectiles can attack the site. So any units, even if they're airborne. Uh, and then that would directly reduce my life. Mm -hmm. um, so you are hitting for two. But since I did have the long bowman here untapped, I am able to defend adjacent sites if I wanted to, if I chose to. Mm -hmm. So I am doing that right now. And since the power of the long bowman is three against the polar bear which is two then you would lose that fight that's correct and he would go into the cemetery and i am going to pass <laughs> okay i'm tapping taking from the spell book and I will hit the avatar with my avatar. Outstanding. I now realize I didn't take one damage in the previous combat. So oh. So I take two now. Okay. But yeah, uh, awesome. So? Good stuff. That's pretty much in a nutshell, uh, pretty much a lot of the basics on, on um, playing sorcery. Uh, I think if you want, we can grab some of these, uh, like the air, and talk about flyers really quick, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, got a few cards here that uh, that we've pulled aside so we could uh, talk about um, interactions. So uh, this is from the Precon Air deck. This is air. Uh, so Spectral Stalker, we're looking at as a cost of two mana 
and the triangle uh has the like a grayish symbol and that's going to be for air uh air elemental um so at the bottom or the text box it says void walk so um void walk you can play you could use two mana and you could cast void walk even though if you don't have a, a site like let's just use this portion right here i could summon this uh this uh spectral stalker onto the void even though they don't have a site on on it um spectral stalker can also move throughout throughout the realm on voids and it can go from the void and it can attack sites it can attack minions and if it wants to it could go back to the void i miss anything on void walker or void walkers no i think you hit on everything okay they're basically the, un the only minions that could move in that strata right right mm-hmm now Unless void the card that specifically allows them to do it right yep and remember like like uh, mike was saying there's there's three stratas in the game so you had your your void your atop um strata and your underneath strata um let's go headless haunt you want to you want to hit headless haunt <laughs> <laughs> this is your favorite you should definitely do it okay so <laughs> headless haunt um which is a fantastic card so it's a three mana drop uh two uh air elemental threshold and it says void walk and then also has at the start of your turn Endless Haunt teleports to the top of a random site or void. So, um, you know, if you play this, you would um, put at the start of your turn. So if you play this, let's just say I play this and I choose 14. Um, at the start of your turn, Headless Haunt teleports to the top of the random site or void. So this isn't the start of my turn, or it could be start of my turn. Um, so, yeah, so I would play that and I would grab a 20-sided die. These mics here. And I would roll the die. And it's a number one. And so this Headless Haunt is going to go to this site or void, whatever's on it. And that's where he will be um, for that turn. And then the next turn, I would do the same thing. I would, if he was tapped... I would untap him. I would roll, and he would be going to six. So that's how uh, Headless Haunt works, and that's how uh, random um, dice rolls work in the game. And from there, you can either move adjacently, right? Because that is not a uh, that action is not a um... considered the move per se. Yeah. Correct. But, cool. All right. Uh, let's go. What's like the stealth minion? Yeah, go ahead. Do stealth, man. Okay. So stealth basically means that the unit cannot be targeted by an opponent's spell, ability, projectile. Um, and it cannot be intercepted, attacked, or defended against. Now, stealth. One key thing about stealth is that you can lose it. It's not a permanent effect. So once the unit does anything other than move or pick or drop a relic or an artifact, um, then you lose that forever. Now, something about stealth is that if you do have a magic spell that has like area and effect damage, like you're just doing damage on an entire site and all units on the site, then it would also affect the stealth units awesome okay mike Ooh. i brought over this mechanic as well so oh yes we haven't talked about um the rubble sites. yeah let's yeah let's do that let's uh i'll let you you've got it ready to go let you do, let you go ahead okay so we've talked about the void and sites but we haven't really talked about 
rubble. So this is a change. I think they did this change in point six, but don't quote me on that one. Nope. But basically, yep. if you, in this case of this card, sinkhole, you can destroy an adjacent site. So let's say you play that here. Well, you could technically destroy this one that's played next to it, adjacent to it. But mm -hmm. instead of creating a void, you would just put down a rubble site and the rubble site is neutral. Nobody owns it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't provide mana or threshold. Okay. You can play a site on top of it if you uh, if it's your turn and you want to do so following the placement of site rules right yep okay uh, so you... okay so uh, uh one thing too so let's just say uh, uh we use uh are these are these nines really quick um i'll we'll grab that also um we are all good so yeah no so uh yeah we'll use uh woodwalker uh the spectral stalker then it's the same thing so sinkhole uh spectral stalker was here um mike plays sinkhole he decides to utilize the sinkhole ability so he's going to destroy uh his site and he's going to destroy the adjacent site uh, both rubble tokens are going to come in since spectral stalker does not have keyword in the text box of burrow um, this stalker is going to be burrowed underneath the rubble and because he does not have burrow he's ultimately gonna die right perfect thanks buddy <laughs> Hmm, let's see here. Uh, next on the list, we'll just go Apprentice Wizard. Um, so we were talking about spellcasters. So your avatars are spellcasters, and then there's other minions in the game that can be spellcasters as well. And Apprentice Wizard is a good, um, good card to showcase that. So Apprentice Wizard is a three mana drop, one air elemental threshold. It's an ordinary, and it has in the text box spellcaster. Genesis draws uh, draw a spell. So, um, if you play this on your turn, you trigger the Genesis ability. You would draw a card, and then uh, Apprentice Wizard is also a spellcaster. So, if I wanted to throughout the game, I could use uh, the Apprentice Wizard instead of my avatar. Do I have an avatar floating around? Here we go. Um, so, Avatar of Earth. And, um, so, Avatar of Earth is a spellcaster. So, instead of using Avatar of Earth to use this magic spell, uh, Ice Lance, I could opt to use. Apprentice Wizard as the spellcaster to play Ice Lance from this location. And it would lance the Longbowman for three. And then if there was a minion here, it would uh, hit the next minion for two, and then so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and, and definitely... Yeah. If I were to purchase a card today uh, of top 20 cards, uh, Apprentice Wizard would definitely be one of those cards that I would purchase. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. One thing we didn't go over, which is pretty good since Apprentice Wizard is here, um, the, uh, the uh, card amounts that you're allowed to have in your decks. So Ordinary... Um, Ordinary is your like your common. Um, and in ordinary, if it has ordinary, you're allowed to have four copies of that card in your deck. So I could have four copies of Apprentice Wizard in my deck. If it says uh, exceptional, like the Headless Haunts, you're allowed to have 
three headless haunts in your deck. If you have one that says elite, uh, do we have one that says elite? Got one here. Nice. All right. Uh, Titan as uh, an elite. Uh, so you're allowed to have two Titans in your deck. And then if you have a card that says unique. Perfect. Spear of Destiny. You can only have one copy of that card in your deck. So that is the, uh, the structure of um, ordinary exceptional uh, elite and unique. Ooh. Hey, Mike, I brought over the pact with the devil because you have the apprentice here. You can talk about this uh, mechanic uh, of sacrificing. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Okay. So, pact with the devil. So, if I have the four mana costs and the two fire elemental threshold to play this card, I've got a couple of options. I could cast it, and it'll say sacrifice a spellcaster or lose half half your life rounded up as an additional cost to cast this. Ignore this if at death's door. So, uh, if let's just say I did not have the apprentice wizard here, I would cast this, and let's just say I'm at. Um, Ten life. Uh, I would play Pact with the Devil, and because I don't have another spellcaster on the playing field, um, I would lose half of my life, round it up, and then I would put this in my cemetery, and then um, I would draw three cards. But in this case. In this scenario, I've got Pact with the Devil, I've got Avatar of Earth, and I've got Apprentice Wizard. I'm going to play Pact with the Devil. Instead of um, uh, um, losing half my life, I'm going to sack my Apprentice Wizard. I'm going to keep my life total, and then I'm going to draw three cards. Which is why I think it's if top 20 cards i definitely would i mean that it's a uh, especially if you're building um a deck that has a fire um packed with the devil i think is a definite must uh to purchase fantastic card yep. hard draw is a very important in this game mm -hmm. for sure and the artwork is insane <laughs> and, and the artwork <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, what's going on? Let's hit, go ahead. Hit one up. Hmm. How about I do airborne? Fantastic. Let's go. Okay. So I forget. You're the one recording. Do you want to put it up there? Yep. That's fine. Wherever you go, I'll just hit the alt and make it big. Okay. So airborne is a unit that can basically move with the nearby mechanic right so we talked about units moving adjacent which basically means one step in a cardinal direction mm -hmm. and units with airborne can move those directions as well but then included the diagonals and then this card specifically has plus two so it could extend that movement two squares Airborne units um, can are basically protected, let's say, from ground units that don't have reach. So if you had a ground unit, let's say we had... Where are the... You can use your... your uh... where, are the, where are the hogs? Oh, let's use this one. <laughs> right here. Yeah, there we go. So let's say Mike was playing the hogs over here, and I had my uh, spirit 
adjacent to him, he would not be able to tap and target the cloud spirit because the hogs are not airborne and they're not doing any projectile ability. So they're basically protected there. Now airborne units can go down and attack the hogs though. So. Okay. Okay. Um let's just say if uh What if your cloud spirit was attacking the longbowman? Can my can my hogs protect my, my bowman? Ah, it's a very good question. So I think the common sense is that yes, you because I'm coming down to attack longbowmen, you would be able to defend as uh, typically. Mm -hmm. and that so then, yes. Yep, and then uh, because of the life totals and power toughness, we would uh, we'd exchange blows, and my boars would die, and his spirit would die. And then also, uh, range range can also um, shoot airborne, correct? That's right, yes. Awesome. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, we'll go next. We'll go uh, the gear hippogriffs. Um, airborne and it has this uh this keyword in the text box that says charge charge is uh i'm going to use magic gathering as a reference because a lot of uh ccg players knows magic um it's the equivalent to haste meaning um it's got it's a four mana cost two air threshold so i need to have four mana and at least two air thresholds to play this if I did meet that mana requirement, threshold requirement, I could play my Hippogriffs on this site. And instead of it having the summoning sickness and waiting to the next turn to usually, you know, use a tap ability, I could instantly come in with my Hippogriffs and uh, attack the site for four or three, excuse me. Yep, it just basically nulls the um, summoning sickness. Yep. You can move and attack on the turn it's summoned. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I'll let you go with the, uh, the relics. <laughs> leaving the harder ones here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's uh, put some sights here. Okay, so I'm just I'm gonna take a stab at this. So if uh, I play Thunderstorm, and it is a aura, so auras you could if it's an aura it, it's gonna occupy four four sites. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna choose these four sites right here. Um, and then it says at the end of your turn, deal three damage to a random uh, to a random unit atop affected sites um so you got the longbowmen here you've got the hippogriffs here and you've got the unicorn here uh deal through damage to a random unit atop affected sites so all three of these minions at this time are atop they're not below they're atop of the site so in this case since there's only three units I would assume I would just clarify to my opponent that hey, this is Longbowman's gonna be uh, one two, Hippogriffs are gonna be three four, Unicorn's gonna be five six, and I would roll a die two, one two, and the Longbowman would be hit for three. Wow. So Doomsday Vice, this is a relic. So it says that so as you can see at the top left corner, um, it has it's a four mana cost. So if you have the four mana, you play the four mana. 
And then in the text box, it says Doomsday Device enters the realm with six counters. Oh, they the, changed that. At the end of each player's turn, remove a counter. When the uh, when the last is removed, it detonates. Deals damage to each unit at affected locations. So ultimately, it has six. At the end of my turn, it would go to five. At the end of Mike's turn, it would go to four. All the way until those are gone, and then it will detonate. Now, um, relics can be conjured onto um, minions. So if I play it from hand, I could conjure it. I could I could attach it to these Amazon warriors who come in with six. Oops. We come in with six uh, counters on it. Um, and in this case, uh, I would use Amazon Warriors and I'd move and it would go down to five. Then Mike would do the same thing, but he can't use, he can't move my minion. Um, and then at, after all of the uh, the counters are gone, it will detonate. And in this case, it is on this site. This is the main site. So if you look at the card on the grid, it has uh, 20. That's the center site. So it would ultimately hit 20, deal 20 damage uh, to this site. And then it would deal eight damage to this site. And then it would deal four damage to this site and so forth reading the um the grid of the text uh also on relics relics is a lot to go over um what else am i missing you could you could attach it to minions um you could drop you could drop it if you wanted to so you know let's say on this turn I end my turn, I, I attach it to my minion. We started this turn, the minion, my minion was on this site. I decided when it was six counters, I decided to move to this site. I end my turn, it goes to five. Uh, Will does his, or Mike does his turn. It goes back to uh, after at the end of the turn, it goes down to four. Uh, then it's my turn. I'm going to untap my minion. And then I'm, for whatever reason, I'm going to decide to drop the relic. So relics, you could also drop them. And then I'm going to move and take my uh, minion. Now I'm going to move back over here. So now this relic is ultimately... Um, it's it's abandoned. No one no one has claim to it um, as of right now. Now at the end of my turn, it goes down to three, and Mike can decide if he wants to uh, pick up the relic. If he decides to pick up the relic, um, he has to use a action, and which would be a tap ability. So he would uh, tap to pick up that relic and at the end of the turn it would go down to two and then it'd be my turn it would go down to one and then it go back to Mike and then Mike has the option to either abandon the relic or he could uh, end his turn and have it detonate what else am I missing on relics here it's a lot <laughs> Yeah, no, that's good. I think I brought these two cards over to kind of show something funny. Okay. Let's say it's uh, turn one. You kind of just dropped it here next to the avatar for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, I could play the... Oh, great. Good. good job, man. Yeah. Grab it and then play teleport and bring, <laughs> <laughs> bring that right over there. <laughs> So yeah, so uh, let's go over some of these things. So, so what what he did was he played Sneak Thief. So Sneak Thief uh, says uh, it's got stealth and Genesis. Pick up relic on any site, even one being carried. 
So even if this was being carried by me, the Steak Thief could ultimately, just, you know, take it and attach it to himself. And then the teleport, uh, and the ally teleports onto any site. So in this case, he teleported to here. And now the doomsday device is back in my bulk, my, uh, yeah, my area. I think the only thing that we haven't talked is uh, weapons and monuments. So I brought you a monument here. Uh, cool. Uh, monuments. Okay. Um, let's see. An exceptional monument of grim uh, persistence. Nearby, managed, ma uh, nearby magic damage is reduced by one. Um, so if I did play monument, um, a monument... In, uh, if it was played, it'd be here. Monuments are um, immovable, and they can't be moved by any reason. Um, right? Am I right in saying that? That's right. So they're just okay. a um, subtype of artifact that cannot be carried, teleported, or moved in any way. So they're basically stuck to the site that you play it on. Gotcha. Yeah. I think that's I think we covered a lot nope. <laughs> similarly like even like Sp spirit of destiny if let's just say if I had this and it's attached to my avatar um and uh you're sneak thief I'm gonna pick on you <laughs> um so bear has tap throw a spear of destiny at a minion in a cardinal direction it moves to that minion's location and kills it. So ultimately I'm gonna tap. Spear of Destiny is gonna do his thing, travel in the carbon direction. It hits the sneak thief and ultimately it kills it. Now, question. Does the Spear of Destiny banish or does it just stay on the site? It stays there on the site. It stays on the site. So then anybody else can come and Pick it up like the unicorn from the corpse. Yep. From the corpse and just uh check another spear of destiny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh sorry, here here's another one that uh, honorable mention of just flavor wise and plain wise. So the bullfrog. <laughs> uh bullfrog, three mana, one uh water threshold, Genesis. The bullfrog swallows another target minion here. So uh, uh, he carries it disabled in his belly until he leaves the realm. So if I if I put out my bullfrog, and there's a minion that's that's on this site, let's pick on the hippogriffs here. Uh, regardless of its power toughness, the bullfrog swallows the hippogriffs. It's in the bullfrog's belly, and it stays there disabled until the bullfrog leaves the realm. Ultimately, once it, that happens, it will spit out the hippogriffs, and then hippogriffs could do its thing. <laughs> I like the bullfrog, man. All right, um, Mike, Will, hey, thanks, thanks guys for for helping out on this uh, tutorial.